Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Secretary General, Your Excellency President uh, Wade, colleagues, and above all, dear youth delegates and youth leaders, let me begin by expressing my warmest appreciation to the United Nations Office for Development and Peace for organizing this uh, first Youth Leadership Summit, which represents the culmination of a series of regional summits held over the last three years. In his um, latest report on the work of the organization, the Secretary General rightly includes for the first time a chapter on global constituencies strengthening ties to civil society. I really wholeheartedly want to thank, thank him for this. Thank you, Mr. Kofi Annan. You have stated very rightly and very strongly that the globalized world has given birth to new forms of participatory democracy in which civil society plays an increasingly important role. And you have also affirmed that the direct involvement of civil society has clearly enhanced the legitimacy, accountability, and transparency of the United Nations. And which area of civil society is more important and critical today than you, our youth? My government is fully convinced of the key role of the younger generation in creating the conditions for the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals and, in general, for the promotion of peace and understanding among peoples. This is also why we created, very few months ago, a new ministry for youth and sports. It is your empowerment that makes the difference. Please never, never forget. My government is also fully committed to multilateralism and to our common work to foster development and peace in the framework of the United Nations system, to overcome unilateralism as a way to overcome conflicts. In this perceptive, the government of Italy is thus very happy to be one of the main co-sponsors of the resolution on sports, development and peace that the General Assembly will be approving this coming November 3rd. We are committed to actively contributing to the development of this important field of activities of the United Nations. Social cooperation also in the sports field has to be fostered to be to go along hand with multilateral conflict resolutions. We all know the global challenges of the third millennium, and you, the young leaders and the young ladies and men, know it better than anyone. Hunger, disease, energy shortages, migration, pollution, terrorism. They can be tackled through an international cooperation that brings together states, international organizations, the UN, NGOs, and the various segments of civil society. It is difficult indeed to imagine the survival of a world that, like the one at the beginning of this third millennium, where more than 800 million people are suffering from hunger and where, paradoxically, one of the greatest concerns of governments in the developed world is growing obesity of their population. In such a world where only a small percentage of people are immune from the scourges of disease, poverty, ignorance, it is utopian, as the Nobel laureate Amartya Sen often remarks, to build peace, establish the rules of democracy, and ensure respect for human rights. We do indeed need radical change and concrete action 
to meet the objective of the Millennium Agenda. To change the world, to think both globally and locally, to promote tolerance and respect for difference, where, whether it be religious, sexual, ideological or racial, we'll need to ensure the involvement of young people in the decision-making process of every field of activity. In my country, I am fond of repeating that the possibilities of innovation are based on the presence of a new leadership whose ranks include many young women and many young men. I believe that at the world level, both in rich countries and in developing countries, we have to foc focus on new leadership that are at the same time very visionary and very practical in order to foster a virtuous cycle that prevents conflicts and gives a decisive impulse to development. And who better than young people embody this hope? The central role of young people as an instrument for raising the awareness of international public opinion and jump-starting the economic cycle is inseparable from both our Western economies and developing countries. It is with them that we have to come to terms and with them that we have that with them that we must be allied to honor the commitments taken by the 189 heads of states or government at the beginning of the millennium and to lay the groundwork for sustainable growth. There is no better investment today in the world than investment on young people. As I have already said, this is true for Western countries, but even more so for developing countries because it impacts on the non-economic human development factors that many economists place alongside the raw economic indicators that have often made the structural adjustment policies imposed on many fragile third world economies so aggressive. The 29th World Development Report, promoted by the World Bank and the Global Forum, issued this year, talks about young people and the development of youth policies in developing countries. As it is easy to imagine, the report states that the top factors hampering the growth are the scourge of AIDS, the limited decision-making autonomy of women in the world, and the low rate of access to primary education. More than 1.3 billion young people out of 1.5 live in the developing world. This is the essence of what analysts call the demographic peak. The report is based on the Millennium Goals, where we must seek a remedy for the world's imbalances, fo focusing above all on young people. The report identifies three lines of political intervention that are essential to helping young people develop their potential and thus contribute actively to the transformation of society. Expanding opportunities, developing competences and offering second chances. Education is the main issue and let me put it this way, every young man and woman deserves a second chance. Young people today live in a world of opportunity, of interchange. Young people, very simply, who represent our future, are decisive to ensuring the survival of our planet and to close the education and digital divide. You have to make sure that public policies invest on this main common and public value. Let me end up with a final consideration from my experience of young but also sports minister. The young generation, also through the values instilled by sports, can provide an important contribution to our common struggle for development. Sports, as a universal language that knows no borders, is a unique mean of promoting this new sense of community, solidarity, and peaceful coexistence among peoples. 
through sports, we know each other. We learn to win, to be responsible champions, and we learn to accept defeats. Sports can be a formidable tool of social inclusion and personal fulfillment. So, as you see, we have big ambitions goals ahead, concrete investment on the passion and energy of young people. This is the aim of the summit. This is the task of the new ministry that I here represent. Thank you once again, General Secretary, Secretary General, for having made this uh, exciting conference possible. Thank you.